Hello, and welcome back to Hoi 4, A Crush at War, The Ascendancy, and oh, under Hiram Zeranid. And in today's episode, the most exciting part of all is the guide. <laughs> oh, I truly am loving the guide. <laughs> oh, like, honestly, uh, if, if the guide wasn't part of this nation, I'd give it, like, I don't know, seven. It's good. Not not amazing, not crazy, but definitely good. Good quality nation, fun to play. Uh, probably gonna have some good expansionist expansion path soon. Yada yada, looking good. But with the guide, somewhere between nine and a half and ten. And I only don't say ten because I haven't played every nation this game. But I feel like if I played every one. I'd just say 10, because I'd rank the best nation to play as a 10. That's how I'd rank it, is what nation is straight up the most fun to play in this game? That's the 10. And this, right, I think it's the Ascendancy. I don't think there's a nation I've had more fun with than the Ascendancy in the entirety of the game. The Hidden Spring. It didn't take the guide long to figure out that the holy water she needed wasn't at Blackwater or anywhere around it. <laughs> the locals were both extremely helpful and vague when questioned about where she could find some. After connecting s s several expeditions together, she and Zethro deduced that mythical liquid that they seek laid in the water forest to the west. The journey there was uneventful, almost ominously so. It seemed like every hour the landscape transformed more and more from the usual Tiaga into something truly alien. They began to have difficulty traversing the almost dreamlike maze of ancient trees, streams, and rivers that broke apart into tiny, narrow waterways. Giant mushrooms appeared from every new corner they weaved into the seemingly endless forest company. Chirps and other noises from typical woodland critters were replaced by unfamiliar crackles and with some difficulty, they managed to locate the source of the streams, a tranquil spring from which the water flowed out of nothing flowing in to replenish it. This is it, said the guide as she pulled out a flask from her pouch. She reached down and scooped some of the crystal clear but otherwise mundane looking water into a flask and sealed it shut. Zethro sighed in relief. That was surprisingly easy. Hopefully the next few will also be free of problems. You, you are not welcome here. Or in a girl voice, I don't know what gender this person. Is. The guide and Zephyr whipped themselves around. Here's the sudden somber voice. The oh, it was more somber. Okay. <laughs> the guide instinctively readied her knife as she knew that anyone who could actually sneak up on her usually didn't have good attention. The hooded mare behind them remained composed despite the intruder's hostile stance. She turned her head, glancing towards the path that the zebras had entered from. You have defied God's holy place. Your intentions are impure. Though we cannot stop you without enough bloodshed that our victory would be Pyrrhic. Leave before you pollute our home any further. The guide and Zethro briefly looked at each other. Zethro shrugged. Then the, then the guide turned to the mayor and bowed in an attempt to apologize. We apologize for the intrusion. We will depart at once. The mayor's face briefly cohorted into anger, but she did not stop them as they left. Obtained ingredient, water from the Holy Springs of Watertown to be used at chemical super projects. Whoop whoop. Now we're going to go to the Whitetail Mountains. The formidable Whitetail Mountains. Surprisingly, this will be the first actual avian territory that I have entered. Not something to celebrate, of course. But it was marked as the place where I'd be most likely to find the tusk that the teacher needs. I hope that the Zethro is up for sub. Mount. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that was a yawn and a half right there. Mountain climbing. He's starting to look a bit tired. If one day there will be people around during the day and I'll be able to record not at night. <laughs> but so far the entirety of my channel has been a night, uh, record at night channel. So, you know, sometimes I yawn. <laughs> Alright, here's 
actual conquest paths, but I think I'm gonna go for economy first. The War for Prosperity. With the soul thieves burnt to the ground, the Grand Crusade needs arms for the lockstep. Legions exalting the glories of production and manufacture will lead the way in enabling the destruction of the avian. Give me the military factories I need. Nice. Oh yeah, here we go. More military factories. Also, good idea to actually go down this military path at least some at some point to, you know, get more troops. <laughs> the terror of Whitetail. The treacherous paths of Whitetail did not earn their name for nothing. Every day was met with challenge trades. Ruminants of bandits and dangerous creatures that threatened their expedition. Fortunately, none of these proved too difficult to overcome. Just as they had finished killing another avian that had tried to rob them, Zethro began to come down with an illness. The guide helped him to a nearby cave where they took shelter for the remainder of the day while she administered potions to him. Despite her expert knowledge of medicines, he did not seem to recover. She scowled, surmendering that he must have caught something not covered by a rupture of elixirs. Suddenly, she heard a menacing growl pierce the muted howl. I, oh, growl and howl. I was like, I was like, wait, did I reread something? But no. Suddenly, she heard a menacing growl pierce the muted howl of the mountain's wind. She turned to the ca cavern's entrance to see a fearsome winged boar slowly advancing towards her. She glanced back to Zethro, whose fever had made him unresponsive. What luck she had, finding exactly what she needed at the worst possible time. The guide readied her knife and surprised the boar by charging towards it. The boar charged back, but it did not expect her to jump <laughs> while angling the knife to cut its head open. Back of head and back open as she passed through the air. The boar collapsed to the ground, and the guide returned to finish it off. With the practice fitness, she severed the tusk of the boar and placed it into her pouch before returning to Zethro. He spent the rest of the day trying to heal him to no avail. His illness seemed to only get worse, though he did have a brief moments of consciousness here and there. During one that moment, he asked her to get a medic's kill equine of gold, seeming to forget exactly where he was, but he soon passed out again just as he as quickly. The guide weighed her options. She could go back to the ponies of that odd village. No, they probably wouldn't help her, considering how they had reacted to the two of them. She could continue her journey and hope that the northern ponies had a remedy, or she could go with the unthinkable options. The avians and whitetail were both close by and might have experienced with his illness themselves. She looked at her shaking hooves as she saw her friend struggling to cling to life in front of her. She fed him more potions, picked him up, and then began to head northwest to the tribal ponies. Hopefully that wasn't a mistake. Obtain ingredient test of the white tail boars. I see. So we're not gonna stop at the Griffins. No, no. <laughs> ah, racism. <laughs> I mean, that's literally the country we're playing. We're playing racism, the country. But <laughs> all right, to the northern tribes. Zethro has been feeling worse and worse. I hope to find some local equines up here who might be able to aid him. The illness is unusual, unlike anything that I've ever encountered before, and none of my medicines seem to be working. Asking for help from the avians and whitetail is out of the question, though. That is one line I will never cross. The last ingredient I need is an ancient weapon known as the Hammer of the Thunder Bear. It should be around here, but it is currently a secondary concern to Zethro's health. Ah, uh, we better be succeeding here. We need to find the doctor or someone that can help this guy. And um, let's see, what mil Yeah, we could use more guns. Because these guns are gonna be just enough for... The now. Though we do have enough uh, support equipment for our current amount, but we also don't have that big of an army in comparison to what we will have. In the future, so that's not saying too much, but you know, it's good that we have enough for now. All right, 
next we need to continue this. At death's door. Oh, oh wow, we're gonna get an option over here. Uh, I'm gonna save. Um, at, at death's door. <laughs> oh, I'm excited for this. <laughs> As their journey continued into the Arctic North, Zethra's situation grew more and more dire. The plethora of potions that the guide had been giving him only seemed to keep it moderately stable. The tips of his hooves began to turn purple. Though whether that was from the disease or from frostbite, she wasn't sure. She didn't have time to check, especially since the calm tundra had given way to the fearsome blizzard. She even had to down the last of her healing potions just to warm herself enough to keep going. She paused to check her compass, only to find that it wasn't there. She turned around, hoping to find it in the snow nearby, but the blizzard was too fierce. She could barely see the ends of her hoofs as it was. She whipped her, her herd around, looking for something, anything to use as a landmark, but there was only a pure white void in every direction. As loath as she was to use the guidance this way, she needed help here. The guide closed her eyes and focused. She felt drawn to an odd direction, so she followed the will of the ever-present guidance. When she opened her eyes again, she found herself at the mouth of the modest cavern. She, not particularly deep, but it offered some shelter from the elements. She entered it and, ca and carefully set Zethro down, then threw a cloak over him to keep him warm. I almost said casually set his death. You know, drop, whatever, moving on. <laughs> Zethro began to cough again. <coughs> the guide unloaded her bags and took stock of her medical surprise, only to be faced with the grim reality of her situation. She did not have the means to save him, not without help, not without... A realization clicked in her mind. The final ingredient she had yet to find, the Hammer of the Thunder Bear, was a little legendary artifact said to instill strength and the will to survive into whoever held it. If she could find it, then it might be able to save him long enough for her to get more medical surprise. She quickly tur turned, leave the in the cavern, but then a weak voice halted her hooves. M mom the guide turned around. Zethro was immobile. His eyes closed. His breathing was ragged, and it seemed that he had became delirious as well. It's so dark. Please don't go. She cursed herself. She cursed Selmar. She cursed his creations. She cursed this forsaken continent and every hardship they had endured for the teacher. She cursed this maddening illness that she could not cure. She cursed herself for not bringing a wider variety of potions. The guide stared at her dying friend. The chances of the final ingredient being able to save him were slim, but it might just be worth pursuing. But she feared that she might not return in time to save him. If she was to leave, then she needed to decide now. Let's try staying with him just to see. I think I'm going to see both sides of this event. Um, just because I kind of want to. The greatest glory. The guide wasn't usually the sentimental type. Throughout her life, she had met with only a few equines that she genuinely cared for, but fate always seemed to take them from her at the cruelest mo opportunities. Now she sat huddled next to one such equine. That was so far gone that he no longer recognized her or where he was, and even seemed to think that he was a young colt again. Between labored breaths, he told her of things like his latest day at school, the bullies that troubled him, the cute filly he liked, and what games he played with his friends. M Mom, are you still there? It pained her to pretend to be someone she wasn't. She did it anyways. Yes. Why, why are zebras and ponies mean to each other? Because they don't understand what their purpose is. <coughs> then was still for a few seconds before he spoke again. What's my purpose? She considered a few answers. To serve something greater than yourself. Like, what? There's a teacher, she paused, wondering if it was worth explaining at all. That's something you'll have to find out for yourself. Zethro was quiet again, and the guide felt his heartbeat struggle. Then it began to slow. Just as she thought he had truly left her, she heard him speak again. I want to change the world. As silence fell, one equine shed a t single tear. You already have. Why? Oh my goodness, this is, um... Woo! I'm crying! Oh my god! That's what that is, isn't it? I'm crying over the page! Oh my god! This is so good! <laughs> this is so good! Oh my goodness! I love this! Oh my goodness, this is so good! Okay. Um. 
<laughs> now we'll do the power of the silver. <laughs> Our divine mission must not be impeded by any hostile force, and to ensure this, we must fully utilize the blessed knowledge of warfare bestowed upon us by the Star Father to cleanse Zebrica of the avian contamination. You do you, whatever. I don't care. I'm... Uh, the hammer and the thunder bear. The guide slowly walked out of the cave, despite knowing that his spirit would be reincarnated elsewhere. She still felt immense heartache at losing someone she had come to know as a good friend. With grim determination, she trudged through the blistering chill and, and scalding snow. For how long she walked, she didn't know. The guidance prodded her to turn left and head up a small hill. It wasn't that far now. She could feel it. At the crest of the hill, she squinted her eyes and looked all around her. Through the blizzard, she spotted something, a series of dirty tombstones particularly hidden in the snow. She made her way to them, only to find that she could not read the odd language hacked into them. Many of the gravestones had suffered from severe wear and tear, but the guide could tell that love and care had been put into almost all of them, for no two shared a design. Unfortunately, she did not know which one held the hammer. The guidance aid had entered here. She was on her own. The guide considered picking graves at random to dig up, but dismissed the idea as she would likely freeze to death before she found the hammer. None of the gravestones seemed to suggest any particular grave held the mythical item she sought. She grew her teeth. The cold was starting to numb her extremities. Just as she had resigned herself to starting with the fanciest looking grave, she noticed something. All the gravestones had a pony etched on them, except for one. The last was a small, otherwise unremarkable stone marker that had a bear-shaped form on it. She immediately began to dig. If this thunder bear was buried here, then the hammer must be with him. By the time she had removed enough snow to assess the grave, her hooves had begun to feel like they were burning. Not a good sign, she grimaced. With significant effort, she managed to heft open the coffin. Inside was a frozen pony skeleton with what looked like the pelt of a polar bear on it. Bear claws were strewn about a necklace around its neck, and in its hooves was a dull, withered-looking hammer. The guide reached down and grasped a hammer, as the, le as the legend said. She was suddenly filled with the strength to preserve. Realizing this caused a gnawing pain to eat at her, she wondered if it would have been able to save Zethro. She shook her head. It didn't matter now. He wanted to change the world, and so she could grant his final wish. She turned and left, beginning a long, lonely journey home. I'm going to... I want to see where this goes. I'm probably going to save after this, and we'll check out the other path and see if he can live. I don't... I don't know. This is... Oh my goodness. This is so good. I can't. This is way too good. Oh my god. I love this. Purpose. Zaguro was as bustling as ever. The guide made her way through the crowd, heading towards the port. It seemed like only just yesterday she and Zethra were here, beginning their journey across Dalmar's domain. Try as she might, the guide could not get her light friend out of her mind. If things had gone differently, might he still be here with her now? Or would fate have taken him away no matter what? These questions only continued to stir within her as she walked. She was so caught up in her thoughts that she didn't even realize that she had bumped into someone. Saw her. She stopped halfway through her apology. In front of her was a griffin. Said griffin turned to face her. The guide could see a pegasus behind the griffin who seemed to be annoyed at the sudden interruption. The griffin faced the, gu the guide and bowed. No need, the fault is mine. I was too busy saying goodbye to my beloved to notice that I was disrupting traffic, and for that I apologize. A knife suddenly appeared in his throat. Ugh! The guide instinctively slid it deeper to ensure the griffin's demise. She barred her teeth and spat. Your kind will never be sorry for enough for the pain you've caused to equinity. Death is all you deserve! The griffin fell to the ground, leaving the pegasus shocked. The guide retrieved their knife and glared at the pegasus, raw anger emanating from her. How does it feel, Cryptoavian, to lose someone close to you? The pegasus tried to take flight and flee, but the guide's blade was faster. Soon, two bodies laid on the guide's hooves. 
She took in a deep breath, trying to take solace in the knowledge that she had removed another two stains from the world, but something felt different this time. Somehow it felt less fulfilling than before. She frowned while the crowd began to panic. Evidently, she had been charged by her... Had, she had been changed by her time here. The guide slipped away on the boat, trying not to think about it. The guide had completed the Griffonian expedition. She is now free to embark on another expedition. Woo! We did it! We, we cried all over this. Um... I'm, I, I would like to see what the other path is like, I suppose. Like, I want to see, is, does it lead to the exact same thing? Does he die still? Does he live? Like, I just, I'm probably going to go with this original path no matter what, because this is so perfect and so sad, so beautiful. I love it. But I at least, I have to know what happens in the other path. I, I, my, my inside will kill me if I don't get to know. I have to know. I really have, have to know. Like, oh my goodness, I have to know so much. This is so good. I need to know. I need to know. Ugh. Just so good. This is so good. Ugh. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this time we're gonna search for the final ingredient instead. Alright, let's go. The hammer of the thunder bear. Um, no. <laughs> The guide spit out of the cave as fast as she could, though the blistering chill and scalding for how long she ran, she didn't know. She wouldn't lose another friend, not again. For how long she ran, she didn't know. The guide was proud of her to turn left. Duh, duh, duh. We find that she could not read the odd language hacked onto them. This we've read. She had resigned herself to starting with the fancy's grave. We've read that. Um, duh, duh, duh. Remembering why she had hurried so much. Okay. Inside was frozen, duh, 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 and its neck had been withered. Hammer. The guide reached down and gas and grasped the hammer. As legend said, this, she was suddenly filled with the strength to preserve. She briefly allowed herself to smile, then remembered why she had hurried so much to get here. With the renewed vigor, she turned around and ran back towards the cave she had left Vez Vedro in. Direful destiny. <laughs> I need to know. I don't know why I'm even doing that because I'm not going to continue to say it, but I need to know. Just tell me. Is he going to live? Is he going to die still? Direful destiny. The guide screamed in frustration as she wandered through the blizzard. She had gotten lost somehow. Where was the cave? Where? Her eyes darted in all directions as she struggled to search. Most equites would have long since frozen to death, but sheer force of will kept her going. Adding to her frustration, the guidance was silent again. She had considered trying to force it to help her, though she had a sinking feeling that doing so would only make her situation worse. She resigned herself to simply keep looking. After some time, she spotted a rock formation jutting out of the snow through the corner of her eye. She sprinted towards it, praying that it belonged to the cave she'd left Zethro in. When she got to it, her heart searched with hope, but she recognized the cavern entrance. She froze when she saw an additional set of footprints leaving the cave. Panic, panic began to set in. She looked inside, but Zethro wasn't there. The guide sprinted back outside. She began to follow the other set of footprint, hoofprints. They appeared to be heavy tracks in the snow suggesting that someone had dragged their hooves through it. She followed the tracks with a sinking feeling in her gut. Please be alive. Please be alive. Her heart skipped a beat when she stepped on something that was most certainly not the ground. She looked down to see the unmoving Zethro, who was partially obscured by the snow. The guide toured the snow away to get to, to, get, to get to him. Fear washed over her and she realized he wasn't breathing. She grabbed his hoof and shoved the hammer onto it, but nothing happened. No, you can't die now. She kept pushing the hammer onto his hoof and praying for a miracle that wouldn't come. Please, please, not like this. Tears streamed down her face, some freezing to her cheeks. This wasn't how it was meant to be. It wasn't how it was meant to happen. She remembered how scared he had sounded when he asked her not to leave. Did he know that he was about to die? Was he so afraid of dying alone that he tried to follow her? 
didn't matter now. She had failed him. She let one of the few equines that she had actually grown to trust die, and she would carry the fact with her always. Wiping away her tears, she began the long, lonely journey home. There was nothing you could have done. I mean, genuinely, yeah, there was nothing you could have done. Now we know that. Because both paths, she fails, so... Yeah, we now know there is truly nothing she could have done. Do we still, um... Yep, here's, our, here's us crying. Ugh. That is so beautiful that she actually cries like that. I'm trying to... Let's see, is this any different? I'm sorry, no need, the fault is mine. I will never be sorry enough. How does it feel, crypto avian? Did I lose someone close to you? Mm -hmm. Yep, this is all the same. And this will unlock that as the same. All right. Well, we saw the difference. It's not a big difference. I like the original version more because I like the fact that she's there for the death. If he's going to die anyways... She might as well be there for it. So I'm going to go back to our original timeline. And we'll be continuing off on from that. <laughs> this is still on screen. That's kind of funny. But we're going to be continuing on from that timeline in the next episode. I guess I've already made my save for, for reading this episode. But yeah. um, Man, this was a good one. This... Whew, this might have been my favorite episode so far I've done in a in this in this game. But yeah. I hope you enjoyed and if you did, like, comment, subscribe and hit the bell button. And as always, peace.